What if I called you by your first name? What would you do? Oh, that took nothing. Oh. Alright, let's chop it up, Ann. Okay. Welcome to Mel and Mo. Only today, Mo is going to be behind the scenes, and we've invited a special guest, Dr. K who is a author, organizational psychologist, mindset strategist, CEO of AccuMind, but most of all, my mom. Give it up, give it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our YouTube, Dr. K. I am excited to be on today. I just wanted to do a video because m many of you may not know, but uh, me and my mom are actually BFFs. That's like my best friend. We're partners in her company, AccuMind, as well as prayer partners. What else are we? Travel buddies. Travel buddies. What else? Confidant. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, all of the above. So we kind of just wanted to come to you guys and, you know, introduce our relationship. Everybody knows her as Gigi on the channel, but. Here, here's my mom, Dr. K. What would you say, Dr. K, what, what made us best friends? How, how, how did we get to that point, what you think? I would say, um, you know, when you were much younger, mm -hmm. I was much more of a, I would say, a, a strict parents, if you want to call it that. Um, much more of a, an authoritarian. Mm -hmm. But I think the shift happened when you went into the military. I can agree, okay. Yeah. So you think that's when we became best friends? I think so. I think so. I think um, so too. Getting the wet letters, um, saying I want to come camp? home. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And right. I think at that point we started talking so much more. Not that we did not speak a lot. I don't think we didn't speak. But you had your own little friends, and you know, just living life as a teenager. Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel like around that time it was still like the strict uh, mother daughter. Uh, the boundaries. boundaries whereas now you know what I mean growing into adult and kind of needing that advice yeah it was there to kind of group that all together yeah we can have those deep conversations that we weren't having when you were younger couldn't have those conversations I feel like especially coming from a Caribbean household it was hard to have those type oh, of conversations yes. yeah. as far as like sex marriage yeah uh, just Things in general that's kind of like taboo, I guess, when you yeah when you have that type of relationship. I agree with you. I think we became best friends when when I joined the military. A lot of people see us on social media and they wonder how we're so close. Yeah, definitely came forth being in the military. So how do you think we maintain the boundaries in our relationship? I think you just know um, the way you were brought up, mm -hmm. the way you were trained. You know you have respect when it comes to an adult. So, you know, there are things that I'm just not going to say to mom or the tone that I'll use to talk to her. So we have that understanding that even though we close and we share so many different things, there's no disrespect either way. No, 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 no. Uh, for me, um, I think I have um, come to the place of understanding the difference between parenting and mothering. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So what's the what do, what, do you, what would you say the difference is? I think it's summary. more parenting. You know, like we can talk. I don't mm -hmm. meddle in your marriage and your relationships and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you're mothering, sometimes you become too controlling, and you know, just kind of taking over the relationship and, and kind of enforcing what should be done based on yeah. what you, you feel right, as opposed to just allowing the daughter to. Uh, make decisions on her own and, and even if you're not in agreement with some of the decisions It's okay. She's an adult and she can figure that out unless I mean, she asks you ask me for some type of advice And still I'll be cautious as to what type of advice especially when it comes to your marriage. That is that's a number one yeah. I feel like a lot of mother-in-laws and stuff. They try to jump into marriages and stuff it's, And at the end of the day you have to let those two people you know what I mean grow together regardless of your opinion so I appreciate that honestly yeah you gotta let them find their way so outside of that like as far as bringing me up and watching me evolve from little 
Melissa to now? Like, what do you what do you see different? Oh my goodness, it's so it's just a joy to watch. Um, you know, as a little girl, you were always very curious, very curious, extremely smart. Um, do you remember coming home and uh, not even taking your uniform off, getting homework done? I was a little nervous. And uh, writing a, a book report without even being asked and stuff like that. Um, so I know, I knew from then that there was something different about you. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew there was something different. And mm -hmm. just to see how you just grow up, you know, from being that teenage girl with the basketball in your hand, always <laughs> boxing around, didn't like makeup and I stuff didn't, like I didn't that. Like any of that. And to now, you know, the beauty just shines out. I think I just had to go through um, my transitions on my own, but knowing that I wasn't on my own because you just kept, you know, mm -hmm. praying and covering me in that sense to know, like, I'm gonna let you wander a little bit, but <laughs> you're gonna come back. So I can see what you what, what you're saying in that aspect for sure. But I just feel like, especially growing up, I kind of wanted to like emulate you and like following your footsteps in a sense, but not so like Princey. Oh, <laughs> if that makes sense. I, so, I mean, so what did that look like to you? So you looking at me growing up. What what did that look like for you? I look just somebody walking around in their heels, coming from work. Mm. You know, I thought he was rich. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was rich. I'm like, man, my mom's so smart. She dresses nice, so I had that fashion. Well, you and my dad both dress nice. You know, she had that fashion sense. I'm like, all right kind of want that but I just had my own little spin to it you yeah. know and then when when you wrote your book I was like oh my god she wrote a book now we're really rich no I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wanted to do the same thing I know and it was just so fun when I mm -hmm. had the privilege I call it a privilege of Burton that book you know going through and, and, and oh. helping you to write that book and push you know push you through the procrastination and and then we were able to to boot that book and, and and have it published. if you guys don't know what we're talking about so uh my mom is actually the author of empower you you want to tell them about your book yes empower you, you build your self-worth and know your net worth and pretty much i wrote this book um after having many women coming through my practice and there was just so many situations where they felt stuck and mm -hmm self-worth wasn't there I'm not good enough and I was like you know what I need to put this in writing so it can reach millions across the world just letting women know that it's okay it's okay to to not feel okay sometimes mm -hmm. but then you want to work on making sure you have that right self-esteem and self-confidence and that was the reason why I wrote this book and then the second half of this book deals with women and money um, you know we found that there's some women who don't even know what the finances are in the house right. because they turn everything over to, to their the husband. husband and that is not a problem we're in but millennials in, now I know and, and in this book I mentioned where you should know because life happens absolutely and there's suddenlies right there can be a debt a divorce a separation and they have no clue what where the mortgage is being paid where the bank accounts are the retirement none of those things so that was the reason I included this in the second half of the book well, Dr. K wrote Empower You, which then inspired me later on to write my own book called Perception Wasn't Reality, Trapped by Choices, Freed by Purpose. And it's a book actually on my life up until that point, um, 2017, 2018. And it basically just deals with trials, tribulations, overcoming, thinking you, you know and you have your life figured out when in actuality, the perception of what you feel isn't wasn't even reality and it's a really good book if i must say it absolutely <laughs> I've, I've heard is. that's what i've heard yes it I don't absolutely know. is i mean they're yes. both motivational they both absolutely. books that can really help you get to the next level if you feel stuck because a lot of us feel stuck and trapped but these books really can help you they're very empowering and um along the way mm -hmm. i had this affinity for kids right mm -hmm. And let's say when I lived in Hawaii for a while, I started wanting to write. <laughs> and um, out of that came oh, book. Yeah, my children's books. 
I am he and I am her. And these books pretty much, I've, after dealing with the adults mm -hmm. and realizing how some women get stuck in their thoughts and um, negative thoughts and it, that become really toxic, I figure if we can catch the kids from an early age, absolutely. like, you know, um, Mo was reading uh, I Am He to Cairo while he was in the womb, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a book of self-love and affirmation. And um, so wanting kids to have a different mindset. Absolutely. And if they start understanding that our thoughts drive us from an early age and we have the ability to change our thoughts, we have the ability to use our imagination and, re and visualize the things that we really want to see happen because just like the vision board, yes. it brought things to life. It's the, the same fruition, way. Absolutely. Exactly. We can use visualization uh, and our imagination and, and have a vision for our lives. And so this is what I would want kids to know. And so uh, Kingdom Mind Academy is where these books, uh, and there's going to be more stuff coming for the children as well as other coaching programs that I have under there. All right. So, but outside of that... How do you think we became prayer partners? That's oh, a good wow. question for you. How do you think yes. we became prayer partners? How we became prayer partners? I remember when you didn't even like to pray out. Oh, pray out loud. Yes. Oh, don't say don't like to pray for people. No, I said out loud. Okay. Yeah. Um, we know we would gather every morning, the and brother yeah. and, and you and myself before school, and we would pray. Um, and you would always like, can I just pray in my mind? Like, you know. And um, I think going into the military is when you started you know being alone and dealing with so many different changes mm -hmm. um you remember that foundation that foundation that covering yeah. absolutely you you wouldn't even like imagine how much things actually transition with you and 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 follow you as you get older but then i finally became a praying mantis yeah, yeah. absolutely i mean that's when you just understand and learn what it is it's like to be in your prayer room you i know? have I, I i definitely had a prayer closet mm -hmm that I religiously, faithfully stay there. Um, especially when you're going through things and if you don't know God and have that foundation to be able to go back to, that can be like torment because it's like, what's your outlet, you know? So that was a big thing for me. And then it got to the point where I would just call her on the phone like, what you doing? You wanna pray? Yeah. <laughs> Which is so weird because I never <laughs> thought I would do that. I just want that to be so clear. but. When you finally gain and build that relationship with God to where it's just like something you, like you quench and you need, it's like, hey, let me let me uh, couple up with somebody else so we can pray. I mean, I mean, it took time. It, you know, it wasn't time. like, you know, all of a sudden you, you know, and we just don't want people like, oh, I'm this holier than thou person. But you know we, what we, your we, answer we, is, yeah. you know, we know we've seen results, what prayer can do. And so that's the go to, you mm -hmm. know. I don't, the thing about it is you don't, I don't ever want people to uh, feel like we have like arrived at some point. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, no, this is a, a daily transition. This is a daily thing that you have to be committed to and know like some days you're like, oh my God, I forgot um, to pray. Yeah. I don't have the energy in me. Yeah. And, and be okay with that knowing that you're not perfect, but you're a work in progress, if that makes sense. You exactly. I, mean? I think I remember there was one time I was just in having those moments and I think that was the first time I said, like, uh, let's pray. And she's like, okay. And she's waiting. And I was like, can you pray? And she's like, oh. yeah, yeah. And that was probably yeah. the first time, like, I heard her really prayed out. And it, it was like, that's a mini me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Literally, right? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I would want to ask you, uh, because of our relationship, uh, I don't know. I don't even remember. We don't even get mad at each other, really. No. If we seems that way then we just laugh it off and we write yeah, back I don't think um, I can stay mad at you. but there are some young women mm -hmm. um that don't have that relationship with their moms um that's why i like to share you and yeah <laughs> and you know what advice would you give to some women who are currently dealing with that um, not having a relationship with their mom. Not having a relationship or they like really upset with their mom and there may be some elements of unforgiveness. So you can't harbor unforgiveness and it's easier said than done, you mm -hmm. know, like to say, oh, I can't, you, you can't not forgive. And, and it, it takes time. I think that's what people fail to realize. Like the forgiveness aspect is sometimes not for the other person, but for you. You know what I mean? Because it's like drinking 
poison expecting the other person to die. Yeah, it's, for, it's always for you. It's always for you. Because, you know, sometimes you're waiting for that forgiveness or mm-hmm. apology that will never, never come. come. For, for sure. So you have to release yourself from that unforgiveness. Whether it's writing a letter to the person, mm-hmm. your mom or whatever, and just making amends. And sometimes the person has already passed on and people are still holding on to that unforgiveness. Right. So... Your your advice would be release work and really releasing it because it's like carrying a ton of bricks on your back all the time, and um, just carrying a weight that you don't need to carry around. Yeah, you know, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. For a lot of women who may not have that relationship with their mom, but they may have a relationship with another woman who's mm-hmm. like a mother just and like figure. Mother. Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta hold on to that and cherish those 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 things. That's what I would say, honestly, because. I probably don't know what or where I would be outside of our relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. I I mean, my relationship with my mom, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a big family. It was eight of us. So it wasn't, it's just you, the only girl, and then Dwayne. But with so many kids, how do you focus on one, right? So we had a good relationship. And and one of the things I remember uh, as we grew up, um, we would always, before we hung up the phone with mom, we would always like, love you. And she'd be like, oh, okay. You know, and um, whereas dad was that whole love bug guy, right? right, right. He was so loving. And eventually, she started responding, right? Okay, love you too. Because her growing up with her, her, her mom or her grandmother, that wasn't a thing. A normal, yeah, okay, to the, you know, you get fed and clothed, and that's it. Yeah, the but actual maternal yes, things. Yes, that I love you thing it wasn't in her generation. Was really not something that she. But that knew. didn't. But that didn't alleviate the fact that she actually loved you. I just think some some yes. women, some parents, don't know how to express right. that because of lack of never hearing it themselves or not knowing how to do that that's it right in turn and then you'll have the daughter or the son whoever it may be who may feel like they're missing this piece because they are requiring something that the person doesn't actually have to give or have never learned to give that so i think communication plays a big role in that like hey you know and you know uh, one of the things i like to say you know like we probably sometimes when we have those you know rocky relationships with our parents and be really upset with them they're probably given everything that they have you know as they say this is all i have this is the full capacity of what i can give to you Mm -hmm. and that's enough and we have to learn how to be okay with that that we want a gallon and maybe they can only give give us a a pint and so we have to understand that's what's in their capacity to Mm -hmm. give and we, w- we need to learn how to just embrace that. So at that point, I did embrace that with my mom. But later on, she learned how to say I love you. Mm-hmm. And um, that didn't mean she didn't love us. She just didn't know how to express it. She wasn't that expressive type. Yeah. Whereas with me, uh, I learned to be really, really expressive with my kids. Um, because I know what that nurturing does for children. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, but that's pretty much, you know, um, as I say with the kids also, we want to really understand how to allow kids to have what I call a growth mindset and so I had another aha moment and I wrote a journal for children um, and it's the growth mindset journal right and so that's really helping kids to have a more open mind um, you know about things and not feel closed in not feel that they can't speak to their parents and parents can't open up to their kids growth so, mindset for tweens yeah it's all about progress not perfection Absolutely, yes. So that's between the ages of, say, 9 and 12, 13. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. As you can see, she has a whole lot to give, a whole lot to offer. Hence why she came up with AccuMind Coaching, in which she is a CEO, and I'm her partner, Coach King. Yeah, because, you know, one of the things that we have to understand is legacy. Mm-hmm. And AccuMind Coaching is part of the legacy. So at, at the moment when I am ready to come out of this, then it gets passed on to her and she can continue, I don't know, pass it on to Cairo or whoever else. Or um, maybe pass it on to a girl. Yeah, if... but this is it. It's all about building legacy. And so um, I work with women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. And I am the millennial coach. Coach King, um, 20s, 30s, teens, 
teens, twenties, thirties. Yeah, that's my lane. Really? Obviously, I have good training and certifications. Yes, absolutely. You know, just helping these women to thrive and not just survive. <laughs> so you can subscribe to drannecapel.com and you will receive a free copy of my ebook, The Empowered Woman. And you will also be able to be added to our new monthly newsletter. So okay, looking okay. forward to seeing some of your emails in the AccuMind Coaching under drannecapel.com. And you can go to www.purposelyliving.net and purchase a copy of my book. It's also on drannecapel.com's site as well. But that is briefly um, us just talking about our relationship without getting too crazy and introducing what we do, our mother-daughter duo, Kairos Gigi. So what are some final words if you want to leave with some uh, mother-daughters? Oh, yeah. um, I'm not saying you have to be BFFs with your mom, but it is a great feeling. It is a amazing thing to be able to call her no matter what and say, hey, is this what's going on? And know that she's not going to intervene or overstep or do anything, but just, just be my mom. And then sometimes be that parent and that coach that I need. It's getting like the best of both worlds. So to any mothers and daughters out there, who may be subscribed to our channel i would definitely say if you don't have that relationship you should start to try to build and progress into having that bond and that relationship with your daughter or your mother because it's something i, I can honestly say that it soothes the soul it's like being swaddled being swaddled <laughs> and i mean one of the things i would just say uh, as a final takeaway uh, to mothers learn to listen you know, learn to listen. Sometimes we don't need to say anything. Sometimes they, they the girls, the woman, young women, they just need a, a, a sounding board. So that's what I learned to do. I learned, my son used to say, Mom, you don't listen. But I've learned to listen. And mother, when there's a need, and parent, when there's a need to. Learn to listen. Learn to listen. Outside of that, travel buddy oh Wes we've had some awesome trips together man go on trips live life yes. enjoy yourself and and know that you know when you get one mom one actual maternal mom don't ever take that for granted I, I sure cherish these times especially getting to do this little video with you I know so my last words is live laugh love and forgive well Thank you for tuning in to Mel Mo slash Gigi today. Uh, it was cool catching up with you guys. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and what more? Subscribe. Hey. Well, welcome to the white table. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Welcome to Mel and Mo, but only today Mo is Taking a leave of absence. <laughs> Are you recording? <laughs> and we have a special guest today. We have Dr. K. What are you, Dr. K? Let me start again. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, let's do that over. <laughs>